Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and I am here again with my friend, Carissa Garcia. Woo! Hello! Hello! <laughs> And uh, we are also here with David Catalano. And if you're wondering why Carissa and I are here, <laughs> it's because uh, we need to make sure David doesn't just talk more than 10 to 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we're trying to do shorter videos. <laughs> but no, in all honesty, David did all the research. We're here to ask questions and for us to just have a conversation. Because if he's just talking at you... It's not a conversation. So you got to stay true to Catholic conversations. But so here we go for the sovereignty of God going along with creation. So if you haven't watched last week's video, go check that out and take it away, David. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm blessed that uh, Mariah's <laughs> letting me do this because again, I am working again. on being more concise Catalano and not going down. Catalano <laughs> conversations. I'm working on not going down in rabbit holes. So. Um, but yeah, so this series, uh, this part is going to be called um, God's Sovereignty, and we're going to be focusing on the sovereignty of God, and we're going to get a little bit into that. So, but um, this part, you know, so one of the things that we're kind of trying to argue against or come against is atheists and evolutionists have claimed Christians as illogical, mm -hmm. right? And that we are the ones that twist the truth. And I think it's important that we have a biblical defense to when we're approached uh, with these claims, right? Mm -hmm. That's what part of apologetics is, but we want to be able to be biblically prepared yeah. so mm -hmm. that when people say these things, we don't feel discouraged or we don't feel wavering in our faith, but we also have the correct response. Yep. So let's talk about what we believe first. I like to emphasize what we believe first. So we believe the universe was very specific and consistent in the laws that make the universe run. So when God created the universe, he created very specific laws that make everything function together in order. So an example of this would be like gravity or the laws of thermodynamics, right? Which is the idea that energy is not created or destroyed, but it transfers from one source to another, right? And so we believe that, you know, in the other laws, like there's laws of astronomy, physics, chemistry. We really do believe in the law of genetics. Um, these laws have an order that caused the world to function, right? Mm -hmm. And so we can see this in Romans 1.20. And I think we read this in the last podcast, but it says, Ever since the world was created, though people have seen the earth and sky through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities. And this is what I believe the invisible qualities are. You can't see gravity. You can't see how astronomy and the gravity of how planets move and how light functions mm -hmm. and all of these things. We, we can't necessarily see that, but we see the results of that. And so that's that idea that those are those invisible qualities that we can see of God. His eternal power and divine nature, again, his eternal power and divine nature, it's only God Almighty who could create such fine-tuned laws that create such order in the universe. Mm -hmm. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Again, I emphasize mm -hmm. that, right? If there's such an order to things, we should have no excuse to go, how could things have such fine-tuned laws that create everything to function in the way they do? So... Um, we're also going to read Genesis 1, 2 through 10, right? Because we're in Genesis, and I love that idea that our faith is built on the foundation of the Bible, and how much more should we understand creation than the first book? So I'm going to read Romans, uh, sorry, Genesis 1, 2 through 10. It says, The earth was formless and dark, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Right? That's the Holy Spirit. Then God the Father said, right, that's through Jesus, who is the Word, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw, God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening came and passed, and morning came, marking the first day. So again, we see that God is instilling his laws, right? The law of light, the law of separating day and night. It says, then God said, let there be space between the waters or uh, between the firmament, right? To separate the waters from the heavens, from the waters of the earth, 
right? And that's what uh, many, many theologians believe that is the idea of creating the atmosphere, separating air between the ground and the water on the earth. And this is what happened. God made the space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heaven. God called the place sky, the space sky. So again, you see he's creating the atmosphere of the earth, right? And evening passed and morning came, marking the second day. Then God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together in one place. So you have the clouds, but then now you have the waters that were covering the earth. But now he's moving them so that they go into one place. So now, now we have dry ground may appear, and that's what it was called. God called the dry ground land and the water seas. And God saw that it was good. Amen. And so here we see again, God is creating an order to how everything functions. He's creating mm -hmm. atmosphere, the air. He's creating land and the seas, right? And so we believe science should be the studying of these fine-tuned laws of creation in order to understand how they came to be. And that's the beauty of it, right? If the universe just happened to be out of nothing and it came from nothing, then there isn't any fine-tuned cons fine consistent laws, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Everything would just be by chance. And so why would right. there be a consistent way of mm -hmm. logic that everything would function? But because there's an intelligent designer with right. his characteristics, mm -hmm. there's a way that his paintbrush works, right? Gravity has a way of working. Even though it works different from planets to planets, there's an overall fine-tuned laws that God created throughout the universe that are consistent. Mm -hmm. And that's what science should be. Science should be the studying of how God created patterns that reflect Amen. that it is one designer. I'll use an example, right? How many animals have brains and hands and feet, mm. right? That was something that God created. You know, he created mm. so many different animals. He created them with similar attributes. Why? Mm. Because all the animals are created from a similar creator. So therefore, there would be similar paintbrushes and different and similar designs, mm. right? And so I love that idea that as Christians, we can almost, we can say, hey, there is a consistency to how the universe runs because we know that a creator created mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. The more we understand how our creator created things and his fine-tuned laws, the more we can understand how the universe functions. Mm -hmm. And so I also believe that's how it works with his word. God created us and there's a way that he wants us to live our lives because he created us in that way that follows his fine-tuned laws to bless us and to experience his presence, right? And uh, it gives us, so studying his word, I think you had quoted last time, Mariah, was the idea that faith comes from hearing, right? Mm -hmm. From hearing his word. And his word helps us reason and give us biblical lens to look and see through this life. In fact, I love one example of this is in the Bible. I think it's in Job. It says that air has weight. Mm -hmm. And for many years, scientists didn't believe air had any weight. Mm -hmm. But later on, even more recently, I mean, in the, probably the last hundred years, they found out that air does have weight. And that was something that the Bible had said wow. because God says, hey, air has weight. And there's a lot of cool. other examples of that in scripture. Mm. But so I just want to emphasize that in terms of what we believe. Now, I want to talk about kind of what evolutionists and atheists believe. They believe that out of nothing came the fine-tuned laws of the universe, right? So they believe that mm. Again, nothing came from something, right? Yeah. There was nothing, and then all of a sudden there was this big ball of energy that contained all the matter for the universe. Mm -hmm. That matter just started expanding, but it doesn't really explain, like, wait a second, what about the fine-tuned laws that allowed the order for this thing to expand and the universe to have mm -hmm. the order that it has? Like, how is it that things revolve mm -hmm. around each other and everything mm -hmm. and the colors and everything that we have? But again... This is actually a well-known argument called the fine-tuned, or a fine-tuning argument, right? And that's not this idea that there are natural laws that exist. Even, uh, it's actually interesting, even Albert Einstein acknowledged that. He said, well, mm -hmm. there's these fine-tuned laws that there must be mm -hmm. a, a creator, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. so it's just, that's one thing I would say is like, yeah, we, I think it's very logical to say there is no way that, that, that by chance we just had the perfect set yeah. of laws mm. that right. allow everything to function in an orderly passion and they're very mm. consistent mm. and so but again atheists and evolutionists you know they challenge that you know and, and and it's hard too i get it because 
the fine tuned laws, what we understand them as are constantly changing because mm -hmm. God is bigger than we are. So why do we believe what we believe biblically? Right. So here's some specific verses. So we read Genesis one, two through 10, showing God creating, uh, you know, creating these laws and separating things. But one of my favorite verses, Psalm 74, 17. I love it. And I'm going to use the NASB because I believe it says this really well. It says, you have established all the boundaries of the earth. You have made summer and winter. And I love this idea that God established different boundaries. For example, the earth is tilted. And so because it's tilted and because God established the earth to be tilted in that way, that's why we have summer and winter because God established an order of the earth to, to rotate around the sun in a way where he created summer and winter. Mm -hmm. Another example of this is Luke 8, 24 through 25. Again, I'm going to use the NAS, NASB. It says, they came to Jesus and woke him up saying, master, master, we are perishing. And he got up and rebuked the wind and the surging waves and they stopped and it became calm. And he said to them, where's your faith? They were fearful and amazed. And I believe that's how we should be with the creator. Fearful and amazed. Like, whoa, God can do amazing things and just amazed. of It's amazing he can do that. He's yeah. just way bigger than we are. Mm -hmm. Saying to one another, these disciples saying to one another, who then is this that he commands even the winds Wind and, and the, the waters and they obey him? him. Amen. So God is, he's the sovereign God who controls everything, the way the mm -hmm. wind moves, the way that the ocean, you know, the tides move and all of these things. He created these fine tuned laws that everything exists. in. And I mm -hmm. also believe that he can do miracles. He's the creator. I always say he can do mods, right? Yeah. He can maneuver his laws to do mm -hmm. special things for his will. And uh, another verse I have is Psalms 19, 1 through 4. I'm going to do the New Living. It says, the heavens proclaim mm. the glory of God. When you look at the heavens, it's just a canvas. I mean, the the the, the universe is so amazing. There are a lot of science uh, astronomers who study the universe, and they're like, the galaxy is so amazing. God is mm. real. Yeah. I mean, look at the canvas he painted. Mm -hmm. That when we can't even study all, that's how magnificent it is. Mm -hmm. Says so the skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak. Night after night they make it. They make him known. Again, like we don't even hear anything from the skies, but we look at the skies and we say, "Wow, there really is a creator," because mm -hmm. it's just so magnificent. Mm -hmm. It says they speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. God has made his home in the heavens for the sun. And so you just see that God created the sky. He created the sun. Mm -hmm. He created all these fine tuned laws. And so why is it important that we believe in the sovereignty of God and how he created things? So again, we believe that God has an order that is consistent with his word right? Again, logos is this reasoning. God has a reasoning. He has a logical system that he created things to be. That's why we are so heavy set on his word mm -hmm. on the Bible, because the Bible gives us view of what is reality, what is true, right? So some of that, and I just want to emphasize this, any good scientist will admit this. There are things we can understand and there are things we cannot. And I'll tell you this, the things we cannot understand are huge. I mean, scientists, I ask, I ask, a credible scientists will tell you that we know a fraction mm -hmm. of all the things that there are to know in this universe. Mm. Yeah. But the idea is that God knows them all and he has an order behind all of them. That, we don't mm. understand this order. And I just think when you look at that, that main biblical principle, where sometimes people want to get into me with arguments and, I, you know, and we got to be careful about just trying to debate people for the yeah. point of debating. I think debating is good under certain settings, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can, I mean, the Bible can be debated and it can, and you can be biblical truths, but at the same time, sometimes we just need to look at people and say, Hey, have you looked at the sky? Mm -hmm. Have you looked at the magnificence? Are you telling me that the complexity of all of these beautiful, amazing things that have such order how from the largest galaxy in the universe to the smallest molecule of living matter all the way to the smallest atom happened by chance mm. without an intelligent designer. Right. You know, that's what I ask. And I love Job 25 too. It says, 
and I'm going to use the NIV because I think it worded it well, but it says dominion and awe belong to God. Amen. He is sovereign over everything. And the awe of saying, whoa, God, your creation is so amazing. You are so much bigger than we are. Mm -hmm. We know so little to the mastermind of what you created everything to be. Mm -hmm. Awe is yours. He establishes order in the heights of heaven. God is yeah. a God of order. Mm -hmm. There's an order that he created the universe and mm -hmm. we can use tools of science, right? Mm -hmm. We can use the tools of studying truth to see how his order functions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just say this, nothing is outside his sovereignty. Amen. And we, when we, that's what science should do. It should bring us to understand how great, magnificent and sovereign God is. Even when we under, try to understand God's creation through science, we need to understand this last thing. And again, I said, it, any good scientist will say that we don't know that much compared to what there is to know. Right. And the Bible talks about that. In Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, it says, mm. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways mm -hmm. and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Mm -hmm. I just think it's crazy. Like what I know compared to what I, what God knows is all the way to the farthest star, which is just, mm. yeah. you know, yeah. but I also love that. I think we've lost that approach in science. We think we know it all and we claim things that are truth in science these yeah. days that, sure. that really don't have, people have a bias and they prove their bias by some evidence they might have, but We've seen over and over again throughout the years, the wisest or the, mm. the most intelligent scientists have often been disproven. Mm. And we need to just be ready to know. You know, that's why I'd say with atheists, I say, do you think with as much as atheists have been, or as much as scientists have been disproven that it could possibly be shown that what they're saying is wrong with mm. the Big Bang and all mm. these other things? Yeah. You know, I think it's we need to open our minds to say, hey, I mean, we believe because we believe what the word is. We yeah. believe God's truth. Mm -hmm. But to right. say, hey, like, is there a possibility that, hey, that God is real and that, that mm. he did create all these things and this right. is the best explanation for it yeah. all? Mm. You know? So Amen. with that, is there anything you guys want to add? Yeah, and I think that another resource that I want to give, like I gave the last video, is Ken Ham, but um, Answers in, gener in, generous, answers in Genesis org. Mm -hmm. Go check that out because he is very like makes it very clear and shows the scientific like research and things that have been done on creation and evolution and God and science and the Bible and animals and all these things. So uh, go check that out. I'll link that in the description below. And also a video that really, I guess, just showed me the maze, just amazed me of how like I know God is real and that he created us for a purpose and there's order and all these things is just looking at um, just the universe and just how big it is and then the order of everything. Like if something was that much closer or just not perfect, like we would all die. But it's so perfect how everything was. And I think that was in the video, How Great Is Our God by Luli, Luli? Lily Giglio. So go check that out. I think that's also a really good resource and video. But ultimately, I think the issue is that people, you have to have faith for evolution or creation. But the main thing is, if you say that creation and how God did it isn't real, you, then you don't believe the Bible because Genesis is very clear. And I love how Answers in Genesis explains that. And your issue and your fight is with God. Like why it says that he's not a liar, but you're telling him he's a liar. Mm -hmm. And that's where we need to get into is like your relationship with God. Where are you? If you were to die today, where would you go? Because your fight isn't with creation and faith and evolution and all this stuff and science. It's with God. And just our, my, our prayer is that you would surrender to him, whether all this makes sense or it doesn't, but just cry out to the Lord and say, God, I don't understand these things, but come speak to me. I, I want you. I need you. My life is a mess and there's no order without him. But in Christ, as a Christian, there's order and there's peace that surpasses all understanding that you can't Amen. get in the world. Mm -hmm. And that just proves another example of what God's done in our lives and the testimony um, of a believer. So, mm -hmm. Chris, did you have anything that you learned from what David shared or anything that stood out to you? Um, I mean, not anything that 
David shared particularly, but um, there was a conversation. No, 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 not like that. I just like there was um, a conversation that I had with someone. It's more like about salvation and just um, the intellectual mind and just like trying to wrap things. Mm -hmm. And I remember having a conversation with someone and I don't know if it's like the best way to evangelize or witness, but I... I had heard it somewhere, but I was like, what's the worst that can happen? Like you are saying that you don't believe like in a God. So you're actually saying that you don't believe a higher being, a God. So it's like, you're already saying you're not believing. And I was like, what's the worst that happens is that you put your faith in the Lord and say the worst thing that happens is like, there is no God, there is Mm -hmm. no heaven, Mm -hmm. but you lived all your life having a relationship with Jesus. So like, even though maybe in your mind, you're like, okay, like, I'm just going to believe this just to like, you know, not be stubborn or whatever. But then you come into that knowledge of like Jesus and you like are knowledgeable of the word and like the word comes to life and the Holy spirit, like, you know, dwells within you. And all of a sudden you lived your life, living a life after Jesus. So it was kind of like a gamble of like, in heaven yeah, of, like what oh, is the, yeah. I don't know. I guess that's just and, my and I wanna, thing. I want to touch good. on that too. Exactly like you were saying, I think a lot of people think, because I've met people that are like, I do not want to give up science. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they said, no, yeah. but I think like you were saying too, is like coming to Christ does not mean that you have to stop studying right. God's creation. Yeah. Dumb. Like the, right. the everyone yeah. who are believers, mm-hmm. there's no scientists that are believers. That is false. It's like bring That's all false. of that Isaac with Newton, you. Isaac Newton, you know, uh, yeah. Carl Linaus, who founded Taxonomy. You know, um, I mean, even Albert Einstein acknowledged that there's God, Mm -hmm. you know, Uh, you know, Galileo believed Mm -hmm. in the scriptures. You know, There are very renowned Mm -hmm. men uh, who believed, you know, in the Bible as the complete authority that were amazing scientists. Yeah. So that's where I want to go and end it because we're going a little long. But the verse in first Peter three, um, 13, it says, now you will want, um, now, who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? But if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you <gasps> for it. That. So do not worry or be afraid of their threats. Mm-hmm. Right? The world and going to a school that thinks you're dumb for believing in creation and then in the Bible. Um, instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. It's the first thing. Not just Savior, but Lord. And if someone asks you about your hope as a believer... Always be ready mm. to explain it, but yeah. do this in a gentle and respectful mm-hmm. way. And we pray that we're doing that today. Amen. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people um, speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ yeah. and the change in you also, like I was saying in the verse 17, remember it is better to suffer for doing good than mm. what, if that is, if that is what God wants, then to suffer for doing wrong. So just my encouragement to do to you is that if you're out there and say all Christians are dumb, then I would say then I don't think Christians should be dumb. I think Christians should be, like it says, like the Bereans studying and yeah. asking questions and figuring out if someone comes to you and they're wit- you're witnessing someone and they say, but what about this? And you don't know, then say, I don't know, but you. I'll come back to yeah. you. Because there is a reasonable explanation, like, this faith isn't just oh you have to be dumb to have faith like there's a point of it where you start realizing like david said with the sovereignty of god that god has proved to be right in every area he has never Amen. been wrong mm-hmm. so if that is what our faith is and that evidence of someone who's never been wrong i'm gonna put my faith in god i'm gonna put mm-hmm. in the faith what he says in his word and so that's just an encouragement for um believers out there to stand firm and to study, to research, yeah. uh, and to know that the Bible is real and just make sure that you're not, some people like to deconstruct their faith and right. rebuild it, it's but dangerous. they're only getting the evidence and the yeah. facts of worldly books mm-hmm. instead of the Bible. And that's wrong. Yeah. So I know this was long, but if send you send us your questions, send us your yeah. questions. Yes. Because we would like to answer more mm-hmm. questions on this podcast. Um, things that you're dealing with or going through. Chris is <laughs> But also, I just want to highlight that I'm the color of Chris's pants. Okay. And if you haven't already, please make sure to like, 
subscribe, and share this video. If you'd like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. And again, send in your questions. You guys can check out our website, calvaryconversations.com. And please make sure if you haven't already, um, leave us a five-star review on mm-hmm. Spotify, Apple Podcasts. That helps get this podcast out. And also share this video to someone mm-hmm. who maybe you've been debating with and you just don't know what to say. Send them this as a resource. Send them the podcast. And also, this is listener supportive. So if you like to donate, please do that in the description below that says donate. And make sure to stay tuned for next week's video on part three, which is... The fall. the fall. Ooh. I was so excited. But yes. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless. I seriously, this lighting <laughs> is the worst lighting you could ever experience. Right. Oh.